to impress on your mind the procedures you should follow instinctively in the event of an emergency at either high or low altitude. The high altitude emergency begins when your instructor closes your throttle. The first and most important thing to do is to establish a normal gliding attitude, which gives you an airspeed of 95 knots. Maintain this attitude. Don't try to dive off excess altitude to get into a nearby field. Holding your established glide, switch your gas selector valve to the other tank and operate your wobble pump. Check the area ahead and around you for a field within gliding distance. The plane you are now in can glide approximately one mile for every 1,000 foot loss of altitude when in proper gliding attitude. With a field selected, such as this on your left, determine the wind direction by smoke movement or water streaks. And plan your approach to be upwind of the field when you are at 3,000 feet. Place your prop in low pitch. Adjust your trim tabs for normal glide attitude and open your canopy. Make a thorough and systematic check of your instruments in an effort to determine the cause of the emergency. But remember, the first consideration is to make a proper approach and safe landing, which requires that your attention be primarily concentrated outside the cockpit. Watch your altimeter, and during this simulated emergency, which started at 6,000 feet, clear your engine by a momentary application of throttle once in every 1,000 feet of descent to assure yourself that power will be available when needed. Try to plan your approach so that when you are at a 45 degree angle from your landing point, the number one position, you will be between 1,200 and 1,500 feet and ready to begin your landing approach. Look at it this way. Your throttle was closed and the emergency began at 6,000 feet. You selected a field and at 5,000 feet were a beam of its downwind end directly above the landing line. Flying a circle about the field, you were at 4,000 feet, a beam of the middle of the upwind leg. At 3,000 feet, upwind of the runway. At 2,000 feet, a beam of the center of the field on the downwind leg. And at approximately 1,200 to 1,500 feet, at the number one position, 45 degrees from your intended landing point. If you are not exactly at the proper altitude at your checkpoints, you may alter your pattern. Suppose you're at 5,500 feet here at the 5,000 foot checkpoint. Simply widen your circle by shallowing your bank and at 4,000 feet you'll be where you belong. Or if you are at 3,500 feet here at the 4,000 foot checkpoint, steepen your bank and shorten your arc and you'll be in the right position at the 3,000 foot point. The 3,000 foot and the 2,000 foot checkpoints are the most important. Try to hit the 2,000 foot point on the nose. From the number one position in a normal glide at 95 knots, the angle of bank and steepness of your turn to intersect the landing line will vary with the wind condition. In a strong wind, your turn must be steeper. In no wind, you may have to cross the landing line and make an S turn to return to it to give yourself 150 feet of altitude with 800 feet of straightaway. Unless the field is unsuitable, 
when you are sure you can reach the desired landing spot, lower your wheel, apply full flaps, and adjust your gliding speed to 80 knots, which you will maintain until you break your glide for the landing. Here is how it should look to you. At 4,000 feet, you are a beam of the center of the field headed upwind. At 3,000 feet, a beam of the upwind end. At 2,000 feet, a beam of the middle of the field headed downwind. And at position number one, you're at 1,500 to 1,200 feet. The completion of your landing approach, if properly executed, should appear like this. You judge the strength of the wind, which in this case is moderate, and intersect your landing line at a point which will give you 150 feet of altitude with 800 feet of straightaway, from which point a successful landing can be made. In a low altitude emergency, simulated or actual, you must act instantly. The emergency usually begins after a takeoff. Never try to get back to your field. Remember, never try to get back to the field from which you just took off. You must learn to instinctively put the nose down and establish a gliding attitude. Then look for the best possible place to land. Say your engine cut out here as you are starting a climbing turn. Immediately establish a glide. Raise your wheels and look for a place to land. To you, it might appear like this. You've just become airborne after a touch-and-go landing. You started your turn and are in a climbing attitude when your engine cuts out. You immediately put your stick forward with a positive movement and establish a normal gliding attitude. You depress the power push and raise your landing gear. Then set your propeller in full low pitch. Then you select a spot for landing that you can reach. Don't try to stretch your glide or make a steep turn, and you go in for your landing using flaps when necessary. If you can find no suitable spot, make a full stall landing into the wind. Never try to stretch your glide as this man did. Never try to turn back to the field from which you took off as this man did. Always land straight ahead or at a very slight angle. And if no landing spot is available, make a full stall landing into the wind. And your landing will probably be one such as this, from which you can walk away. <laughs>